In one of my first sessions, when I was still very insecure about what I was doing, a guy came in late to the session. He started yelling, I'm a junkie. I'm dope sick. I can't sleep. I can't eat. I'm probably going to die on the street shooting dope. And now you're here with some guitars and drums. How's this going to help me? I'd been right where he was at. I was in treatment, and this was just an endeavor to try to bring the magic of music into the early stages of recovery. The song we were writing was about our addiction and our challenges with dope and booze and pills and all of that. And he started to listen and buy in. And the only instrument I had left was a little pink shaker. He started dancing and jumping around and he was like, dude, you're gonna be here next week, right? That was awesome. What I watched in that moment was a gentleman go from hopeless and suicidal to hopeful. And I watched his physical symptoms of being dope sick go away. And I saw just how powerful music could be in this setting firsthand. After having a few sessions under my belt and feeling pretty good about it, I thought, can I scale it? Some of my dearest friends were musicians in recovery. Amazing musicians, giant hearts. Sonny Mayo was the first sober musician I ever knew. My friend Nate Lawler, Brandon Parkers, Brandon Jordan. And next thing you know, there's five of us. And the rehabs were coming for it. We started doing 100 sessions every month. We had a board meeting one day and somebody said, hey, we should work with veterans. So I reached out to the Air Force and they had just started building a resiliency program for wounded warriors. When we're in that dark place, it's all so similar. Feeling lost and alone and misunderstood and hopeless. And the way out is very much the same. It's about connection. It's about expression. It's about feeling and healing. And music had such an incredible impact with the Air Force Wounded Warriors. And we've just entered into our sixth year of contract with the Department of Defense helping wounded warriors of all branches of the military. A couple years into Rock to Recovery, we decided to grow our fundraising efforts and start having a Rock to Recovery fundraiser event. Over half the crowd is in recovery and they come to our concert and see how alive and bright and beautiful it is and how wonderful sobriety can be. When COVID hit, we found a way to bring our program to people virtually. Our business actually started to increase. We could offer in-person and virtual sessions to all our many treatment partners. To date, we've written over 26,000 songs, working with well over 100,000 people, 200 treatment programs, offering over 7,500 sessions every year. Addiction treatment, mental health, eating disorders, traumatic brain injuries, wounded warriors, incarcerated youth, at-risk youth, we've seen Rock to Recovery work wherever we take it. And with your help, we can take it even farther and help anybody who can benefit from our musical program. Rock <laughs> now more than ever, with suicide rates the highest ever, overdoses, mental health issues like never before, there's never been a more important time for us to have programs like Rock to Recovery operating out in the world. We know we aren't the cure for everything, but we know we're a very important part when people come into treatment and they're new, it's as if their heart and their soul is encased in rock, calloused over by the pain and trauma and hurt they've experienced. And our music program helps to crack that open and show them that deep down inside, that happy, joyful and free, playful, childlike spirit still exists. So as we roll into 12, 12, 22, 10 years of Rock to Recovery, I want to, from the bottom of my heart, thank everybody on the team, on the board, in the audience, all our supporters and donors for helping us do what we do in bringing the magic of music and healing to the people who need it. Rock to Recovery is all about music, and music is about connection, and connection is the answer.